Hi everyone, today we'll be looking at the mechanics paper of the advanced subsidiary uh, level of May 18. Question 6, we've got a man throwing a ball into the air, so that when the ball leaves the hand, uh, the ball is 2 meters above the ground, moving vertically upward with a speed of 9 meters per second, and we'll be using G to be 10 meters per square second here. We need a diagram to illustrate the situation here. So, essentially, the ball lives uh, two meters above ground. It uh, has this trajectory here, something like this. To start off with, we've got the initial speed to be nine meters per second. The acceleration is minus 10 because it's acting in the opposite direction. And uh, we know that the ball hits the ground capital T seconds after the leaving the man's hand. And we need to find the value of T. So at this point here, the displacement is negative 2 because it's two meters below the launching point. So we could use uh, S is UT plus a half AT squared. So minus two is nine T plus a half times minus 10 T squared. So 5t squared minus 9t minus 2 is 0. I could factorize this. I get two values for t. t is minus 1 over 5 or t is 2. I reject the negative. That's not valid. And therefore... The answer should be two seconds. In question seven, we've got a, a train traveling along a straight horizontal track between A and B. It initially starts from rest at A, moving with a constant acceleration of 0 0.3 meters per square second for 80 seconds, attaining a constant velocity and then moving with a constant deceleration of 0 0.5 meters per square second. We need to start off with uh, part A, for which we need to find the value of the constant velocity of the train, state the time for which we're decelerating and sketch a, a velocity time graph, all of this. I will actually start with the VT graph because it will certainly help me understand what's going on. So it's going to be a typical trapezium where we've got the initial acceleration, constant velocity, and then the deceleration. So it should look something like this. So this is the velocity in meters per second. And this is the time in seconds. Now we know that the initial acceleration, so the gradient here was 0 0.3. And uh, the time for which we've been accelerating has been given to be 80 seconds. Now we know that the gradient is a rise over run. So if I do the rise over 80, I'll get 0 0.3, which means that 80 times 0 0.3, 24, is the constant velocity attained here, 24. And the train moves at a constant velocity. It uh, then moves with a constant deceleration of 0 0.5. So the acceleration here is minus 0 0.5. In this case, knowing that the drop in height is 24 can help us find the run here. It's 48. So all of this here is 48. 
So we have pretty much answered in part I, state the value of the constant velocity of the train, 24 meters per second, don't forget the unit. State the time for which we are decelerating, 48 seconds, and the velocity time graph is there. Now the total distance is 4,800 meters, we need to find the total time taken. So. I'm just gonna call this here T. So this is T minus 48. And if I subtract the 8 and the 48 from T, I get T minus 128. We know that in a VT graph, it's the area under the graph that gives me the distance covered. So the area is just the area of the trapezium, which is base 1T plus base 2t minus 128 over 2 times the height, which is 24, being equal to 4,800. Now the 2 with the 24 leaves me a 12, and the 12 with the 48 leaves me a 4. So we have that 2t minus 128 is 400. And solving for t, is giving me an answer of 200 and uh, uh, sorry it's uh, 400 plus 128 divided by 2 264 seconds that's the total time for this journey it then says suggest an improvement that could be made for the motion from a to b to make the model more realistic well, if we quickly read through the question, we are assuming a constant acceleration that's unlikely to be the case in reality. So what we could say for a point is that um, the, the acceleration not being constant. Acceleration is not constant. And that would qualify for the mark uh, and that would be the, the end of the question in question 8 we've got this particle p moving along the x-axis with the expression here for x the displacement being given in terms of t the time in seconds we need to find the times at which p is instantaneously at rest so we know that uh, we need to differentiate in order to differentiate we first expand we get x is t to the power of 4 over 2 minus t cubed plus t squared over 2. We differentiate to find the velocity, and uh, this is giving us 4t to the power of 3 over 2 minus 3t squared plus 2t over 2 which simplifies to 2t cubed minus 3t squared plus t. At rest means that v is 0. So we'll factor out the t. I'm left with 2t squared minus 3t plus 1 being 0. I can further factorize this. And this is giving me the values of 0, a half and one second. So these are the, the times at which we've got the velocity of zero, so the particle is instantaneously at rest. And then B, we need to find the total distance traveled by P in the interval from zero to two. So I think I would actually invest some time in drawing quickly a sketch of this. It's easy to spot that x is a half t squared t minus 1 squared so it's a quartic positive coefficient of t to the power of 4 and we've got two double roots at 0 and 1 so it's probably going to be looking something like this now obviously the part on the left hand side is not really existent because time cannot be negative uh, but this is certainly giving us an indication of what's happening so this is the zero this is the one actually here 
it's the point we just found, the half. And uh, this is x and this is t. And at some point, it's the 2. So this is the 2 here. So all we need to do is find the relative heights here. So if I plug in x is a half, so if I plug in t is a half into the expression uh, for x, I will get a result of 1 over 32. And if I, if I plug in the value of 2, I'm getting a result of 2. So the distance covered, it's going to be the 1 over 32 plus the 1 over 32 plus the 2. So if I add these numbers up, I'm getting a result of 2 and 1 over 16 meters. So that's the total distance covered. We have to show in part C that P will never move along the negative x-axis. Actually, putting this into a perfect square form is certainly helpful because I'm just going to state that since T squared is greater than or equal to 0 and t minus 1 squared is greater than or equal to 0 for all t. x is greater than or equal to 0 for all t. Hence, the particle will never move on the negative x-axis. Question 9, uh, we've got the P and Q with masses 2M and KM respectively. Uh, they are connected with a light string. It's released from rest, this system, and it, uh, P goes down with an acceleration of magnitude 5G over 7. I will start off by adding the uh, forces acting on this system. 2MG and KMG are the weights. We've got tension pointing upwards. We've got acceleration, P goes down, so A is 5G over 7, and Q experiences the same acceleration upwards. We need to find, in terms of M and G, the tension in the string. So I'm just going to consider P, where there is no other unknown apart from T, and I'm just going to say that 2MG minus t is 5 m g sorry 5 g over 7 times 2 m so 2 m g minus t is 10 m g over 7 which leads to t being 4 m g over 7 newtons so that was part a explain why the acceleration of q also has a magnitude of 5g over 7 that's because the string is inextensible and then moving on to c we need to find the value of k which means that we need to go back we've considered uh, originally p now we will consider q we're just going to say that T minus KMG is equal to KM times 5G over 7. We know that the tension is 4MG over 7. So 4MG over 7 minus KMG is 5KMG over 7. I'm going to divide throughout by mg, multiply throughout by 7, leading to 4 minus 7k is 5k, so 4 is 12k 
which leads to k being a third. So that's the value of k. And final question, identify a limitation of the model that will affect the accuracy of your answer to part C. One such limitation is not taking into account not taking into account the mass of the string. Other acceptable answers could have been mentioning that the pulley may not be smooth, may not be light, uh, balls are not particles, and the string may not be light and may not be inextensible. So that was the AS Mechanics paper of June 2018. Thank you very much.